My team and I have one week to fix this underwater ROV. It's basically an underwater drone. My robotics team currently consists of two of my friends, Tanner and Austin. Plastic into the air. Neither of them actually have any real experience in robotics, but what could go wrong? What could go wrong? First thing we did was take apart the frame. We wanted to get easier access to the juicy bits of technology enclosed in the shell. I explained to them the plan for the new control board. The plan was based completely off of some doodle I made in chemistry class. Day one, not too much was actually accomplished. You guys switch it over to sync. So we got to work, and the search for the best possible specimen for a new control board began. Our only means of actually cutting something is not working. Dude! The screwdriver is, I'm trying to find my favorite screwdriver. Oh! Did you? Oh. You threw it behind here. There's miscellaneous boxes under his <laughs> bed. So the workshop's really messy, and um, we're actually going to try and clean it up. Clean the department. So, we can use either this, um, which only has a little bit of toxic on it, and this is literally wrapped in um, toxic. Cancer tape. Cancer tape, it's wrapped, it's wrapped in cancer tape. So... Cancer bubbles. <laughs> oh, there goes my hard work. Sorry. Okay, so we're gonna put everything on this cheap piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. Some of you might still be wondering, what actually is an ROV, and what is it made out of? Well, I'll tell you, you curious little- The ROV has three thrusters, a single camera, a simple programmable circuit board called an Arduino Uno that takes the information from the joystick controller and uses those instructions to create instructions for our tiny computers that control the thrusters called ESCs. Those take the signals from the Arduino and precisely control the speed and direction of our thrusters. All of the ESCs and the camera are powered by my handmade, my own, personal invention I call the power on terminal. You can call it pot for short. By the end of the day, I had soldered everything I needed to be soldered, reconnected wires, and I managed to connect all the systems together once again. Yeah, I gotta look more professional for the vlog. You got a lot of work to do. Yeah. And we have an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so today we're actually going to move the motors around. We're going to put the motors in a different spot. What we could do is we could close up the frame. Because we already took the motors out. But before mm -hmm. we do that, we want to make sure... Alright, I've made sure. And these are the screws that go like for this. What? Here, here, uh, stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Bit. Oh boy. Not again. Oh my god. Thank you, thank you, sir. Most of day three was spent putting the frame back together and moving the thrusters to the outside of the frame. We had to move the thrusters in order to make space for the watertight enclosure. By day four, the control board was nearing completion, with a few wires that could use a little more attention, and a few minor tweaks here and there, the main emphasis for today is cleaning up that disgusting rat's nest of a control board and trying to get something that I could actually be proud of. I, I tried three uh, different programs, and one went horribly wrong, the second didn't work, and I just ended up putting the original code, so we basically went in a, a circle and accomplished nothing. <laughs> So everything is plugged in um, and everything should work. If it works, we'll put it back in the boob. Boob. Like 
So for the most part, it works and it works fairly well. Like it'll swim around. Uh, we're gonna look. We're gonna look at these wires here today. Examine them. Make sure that nothing is touching. Because if things touch, that could mean a fire. So I'm just trying to make sure that things are as safe as possible. Everything is nice and secure. I'm not even gonna add a drop of hot glue to keep things in place. Well, it's gonna be hard work putting the uh, robot back into the tube. So we eliminated a lot of stuff and maybe it'll actually like close this time, but one thing's for sure, we need grease. Let's get the grease. Yeah. Grease hunt, <laughs> episode one, number one, looking for the grease. There is no grease oh, in here. Oh no, no grease. There's only wires, it's okay, it's okay. Those do cause birth defects. We found the grease. There it is. After we had successfully completed the control board and everything was plugged in, and the coating was actually still the same. It was time to seal the tube. All in all, the robot works. It's not perfect, but it should do the job. No matter how challenging or intimidating things may seem, just know that it's not outside of your reach. As long as you actually try, you only really lose when you stop trying then I'm pretty sure you can do whatever you put your mind to. So go out and try something new, take on a challenge, and see it all the way through.